Hello, I'm Becky. We're carrying on with Luke today, so we're in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. Love your enemies. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who ill treat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop them from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks for you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. This passage comes just after the calling of the twelve apostles and is part of a whole ream of key teaching points from Jesus. As I teach myself, this part of Luke's Gospel feels a bit like a medium term plan where all the key teaching points are contained and then the rest of the Gospel explains them and illustrates them. In Matthew's Gospel, it's even more obvious with the key teaching points set out in very clear chapters. There's a chapter on divorce, prayer, murder, giving to the poor, fasting and the passage we're looking at today, loving your enemies. Love, uh, Luke summarises the teaching point really clearly. Love your neighbour. The great commandment. But it's easy to love those who love you, that are like you, your friends, your neighbours. That's easy and it's what's expected. It's what's expected of everyone. But Jesus' teaching expands it takes it further, takes it to the next level, takes it to the next challenge. Love your enemies. Those who it's not easy for you to understand or to be friends with. Love those who are different to you without judging them. Loving those who we know, who are similar to us and share the same values as us and beliefs, that's easy and everybody can do that. That's not what makes us followers of Christ. What makes Christians stand out, what makes them distinctly different, is when Christians genuinely love those who do not love them, who are not the same as them. Being friends with, supporting, listening to and caring for those who are different to you, who make choices that you wouldn't necessarily choose yourself, it's not easy, but it's not our job to judge. Judgment is God's job. We are called to be friends, to love our enemies, to show respect and support those who are different. One of the most surprising things for non-Christians often is to see how generous Christians can be with their money and their time their offers of support and how generously that they give those. Christians following their teacher's example and loving all of God's creation without any judgment. Now I hope that we do that without being boastful or 
making a big point of saying that we do do the certain things because we are Christians. I would hope that people looked at my life and our lives to and made the connection themselves that we do the things that we do because we are Christians. We do not know what is going on in other people's lives. We do not know why they have made the choices that they've made. But that's nothing to do with me. All I can do is be the best person I can be, showing kindness and being generous with all the things that I have without judging others. Who do you need to pray for and show love to today? Where can you break down barriers and move out of your comfort zone to love people who are different to you? It's not easy because we often surround ourselves with people who are the same as us, who share our values and our beliefs. So we have to step out of that comfort zone to truly follow Jesus and love our enemies. Jesus demonstrates his teaching to those who are learning to follow him on the cross, in pain, with outstretched arms, when he says, Father forgive them. He prayed for his persecutors. He showed love towards his enemies. Stephen, and we can read about him in Acts chapter 7, the first Christian martyr, followed his teacher's example and prayed for those who then went on to stone him to death. Praying for our enemies and doing good to those who hurt us is following Jesus' example. The more regularly we pray for those who hurt us, who hate us, the more we will grow in compassion for them. It may be difficult at first, but through our prayers, God may not only change the person who hurt us, but he, we will be changed as well. Which of your enemies do you need to pray for right now? Which relationship do you need to bring before God right now? It might be a relationship that's broken down. It might be where there is hatred. It might be where there are differences. Name them in your heart. Or actually, say their names out loud. Whether you're sat watching this, drinking a cup of coffee, or whether you're doing the washing up. I invite you now to actually say the words, to say, name the relationship with an enemy, whatever that may look like in your own life, and move towards that journey of healing and compassion so that you too can love your enemies and spread God's love for all of us. Amen.